Imagine your mind as a village. Picture a valley floor with little huts, people, livestock, roads, and lots of streams of water, like veins connecting one area of the village to another. It's a pretty happy place, but complicated, requiring a lot of attention and cooperation among its villagers. The valley is surrounded by steep mountains, and on one side, a huge dam, larger than the imagination. On the other side of this dam is the largest body of water in the universe. It contains all thoughts that are possible to have. All thoughts. What's the weather like in Santa Monica today? There are 31,622,400 seconds in a leap year. All thoughts that anyone who has ever had a thought could ever have are there, including the thoughts you like, the thoughts you don't care about, and the thoughts you hate. Now, because the village, your mind, needs water, thoughts, in order to function, there are many carefully placed holes in the dam that allow for a steady stream of desirable input. This water lands safely on the village floor and goes through all of the necessary streams and aqueducts for the village to thrive. For the most part, the dam holds everything back. It separates you from your thoughts. Your mind couldn't handle being aware of all thoughts at all times. Most of what goes on in the mind is a complete mystery. All you really need are some basics, just a consistent trickle of certain thoughts so that you can tie your shoes and brush your teeth. But when you have OCD, there are some cracks in the dam such that extra water comes leaking through. The barrier that separates your wanted thoughts from the rest of your thoughts seems to be doing a subpar job. It's not a bad job. Otherwise, your mind would be flooded all day, but it's not as effective as it could be. You can view this unwanted stream of thought as the definition of an obsession. It's intrusive, it's undesired, and you perceive it as problematic. Your first response to it may be to climb the dam and plug the cracks with something. Or, in the heat of anxiety, you may find yourself just taking a hammer to it. But this never works. At first, doing so may appear to slow the leak, but soon the crack gets bigger and the stream of obsessive thoughts gets more intense. This is why acting on compulsions doesn't work. Mindfulness isn't about stopping the flow of unwanted thoughts. It's about seeing the dam. It means taking a moment to notice that although most things are working as you expected, there are, in fact, some cracks in the dam, and there are, in fact, some intruding streams of thought. This leaves you with two options. Pound your fists against the dam, hoping this stops the leak, or accept the leak as simply something that is. Maybe you can use the extra water to better irrigate the crops of your mind. Or maybe this water has no specific use and you need to learn to live in a wetter climate. In the end, there's only acceptance. Let the thoughts in. Let them mingle with the other thoughts. Let them simply be. And accommodate them by changing your perspective on the value of their presence. Framing the presence of unwanted thoughts as just the added flow from a larger body of water takes away the importance of identifying them as good or bad. It creates space for you to view the thoughts as mere thoughts, without judgment and without your having to do anything about them. Observe and Report The Effortless Security Gig One last metaphor. We promise. Just kidding, there are always more mindfulness metaphors. Imagine you are the most patient, most relaxed, least motivated night watchman of all time. Your job is literally to sit in a swivel chair and keep an eye on six monitors. When something appears on a monitor, you write it down. You turn the login every morning, only to receive a blank one in return, never knowing what the boss does with the information. One monitor is labeled sound. When you become aware of a sound, you jot it down. Imagine really viewing your experience this way. 
You're leaning back in your chair when a glimmer of light strikes you from the left. It's a word on the monitor that says whirring noise. You think, probably the air vent, but you just write down whirring in your log under sound. But wait, the monitor to your right lights up with the words, probably the air vent, and this monitor is labeled thought. You write, probably the air vent, in your log under thought. The other four monitors? They're labeled sensation, vision, taste, and smell. As described in Buddhist philosophical texts, and frankly, in basic experience, what we can observe comes down to these six things, your five senses and your thoughts. To be mindful is to watch what arises in consciousness and treat each item simply as a data point on each monitor. Observe and report. You are not the IT guy responsible for connecting the monitors. You are not the programmer responsible for what the monitors display. You are simply the one who watches. So let's take a look at how this works when you have OCD. It may begin with a what-if thought and you may recognize, oh, there's a thought. Or it may begin with anxiety manifesting as tightness in your chest, and you may recognize, oh, there's tension. In other words, working this security gig, or being mindful, essentially boils down to saying, oh, there is blank, followed by whatever you see on each of the six monitors. So now all you need to know is how to get this gig. Meditation, the practice of mindfulness. Meditation, in its simplest form, and for the purposes of this workbook, is literally practicing mindfulness. It's setting aside time from a single moment to several hours to stop resisting the present experience and to simply notice it. The practice is truly straightforward. Tether your attention to one thing. For example, the experience of breathing, sitting, or hearing, and acknowledge whenever your attention strays from that thing. Then, begin again with your attention on the first thing without judging yourself for having wandered. The mind is very much like a puppy. You can train a puppy to mostly walk in a straight line, but its instinct is to sniff around its environment. When it strays from the path and starts digging at the flowers in the neighbor's yard, you might gently tug on the leash or comment, uh-oh, come back over here. You wouldn't get down in the dirt with the animal and pull at your neighbor's flowers, nor would you violently yank the leash and scream at the poor thing. You just gently note that it is strayed and gently invite it back to the path. Over time, the puppy learns to walk in a more settled way, though it will still occasionally sniff around, because that's what puppies do. Minds are also built to be curious, but untrained, they get lost, confused, and you suffer. We'll explore how to train your mind in this way, with specific OCD content in later chapters, but for now, consider that meditation is simply a form of exercise of mental hygiene, the practice of which gives you an advantage over OCD by reducing the time you spend lost in its stories. Meditation that uses breathing as its anchor is a common form of meditation because breathing is one thing that we always do, that's always present, and that's always real. There's nothing theoretical about breathing. So when you pay attention to your in-breath and your out-breath, by definition, you must be present with what is. OCD constantly tries to force you away from the what is and into the realm of the what if. Meditation is simply noticing when you've been pulled away, allowing for that pull, and then gently starting again from the breath. Gentleness is actually important here. If you judgmentally call yourself back to the present with thoughts like, think about your breath, stop obsessing, you can't do anything right, that's yanking too hard on the puppy's leash and sending you into deeper distraction. Remember, you're not trying to make your mind defiant, but rather compliant. This guiding back 
Using your awareness of your mind to acknowledge when you've left the breath and purposefully bringing yourself back to the breath is an exercise in the same way that push-ups are. Returning to the present and sticking with it, also known as cognitive control, is an ability and, as such, something that can be strengthened with practice. For a comprehensive exploration of the science behind this and meditation in general, see Altered Traits. Science reveals how meditation changes your mind, brain, and body. Even a little practice makes you stronger. What you're practicing is the coming back and starting over without precondition and leaving your attention settled where it is. You may have noticed that many times when you obsess, you ask yourself to stop, to come back from the review and just let things be. You try, but the runaway mind ropes you back in with the false promise that satisfying some compulsive urge will release you. By practicing anchoring yourself to the present in meditation, you can improve your ability to return from an obsession rather than remaining lost in endless battle with it. And you can engage this skill even when you aren't meditating. When you have OCD, being in the present may hurt whereas letting your compulsions pull you away may spell relief. You may be thinking about the times you've tried meditation in the past and come across these bits of resistance. Sitting quietly with all these thoughts in my head is too painful. I won't last 30 seconds. If I sit and breathe for five minutes, that's five minutes of being unproductive, and I'm not okay with that. I've tried, and I can't do it right. I just get bored and annoyed with myself. I keep thinking and ruining it. Jot down any reasons you think using meditation might be challenging for you. The OCD has a way of turning the very concept of meditation into its opposite. But this doesn't mean you can't meditate because of your OCD. It means you have to allow for the OCD when you choose to meditate. What's more, your mind may be better suited for meditation than you assume. The OCD mind is rich and full of texture, and you may already have more practice than the average person when it comes to observing what's going on in there. If you're paying attention to this book right now, you're likely practicing the back and forth from these words to your thoughts and back again to these words. This is all meditation is, simply paying attention with the clear intention to keep paying attention. The next two meditations are available in audio versions at newharbinger.com forward slash 45632. An additional meditation, Meta Meditation, is also available there in audio and written versions. A Basic Breathing Meditation Practice Sit in a relaxed position in a chair, on the floor, or somewhere else that's comfortable. Place your hands on your lap, at your side, or gently together. Keep your back upright and supported if you can. Beginning with the intention to be relaxed but alert can get the practice of training your mind started more effectively. Don't try to clear your mind. It's a waste of energy, and it can't be done anyway. We're not here to judge the mind, or to empty it, just to observe it as it is, and to invite it to settle when it's ready. So start observing how your mind is full, and let it be that way for now. Close your eyes, or gaze softly in front of you. Take a few breaths in through your nose, and out through your mouth, just to help you settle in. You may find it helpful to make a wind sound as the air leaves your body. This can help the breathing be more intentional, making it an even wider anchor for you to stay present with. Think of these few exaggerated breaths as palate cleanser, something to separate your previous activities from this new activity of meditation. Then, return to breathing normally, in and out through the nose. 
See if you can notice when a breath in begins and ends, and when a breath out begins and ends. It can be helpful to start by focusing particular attention on one place in your body where you feel the breath more acutely. It might be the sensation of the chest or stomach expanding or the vibration of the air as it passes through your nostrils. Consider this home base. Almost immediately after sitting and making the conscious decision to meditate, you might notice that your OCD is out to get you. You become aware of all your uncomfortable thoughts and feelings, plus annoying thoughts about how meditation itself is simply peculiar. You may feel distracted by anxiety, stomach discomfort, dizziness, a thousand unreachable itches around your body. The tendency is to see these things as blocking you from meditating. Mindfulness would suggest that you see these things simply as objects of attention, experiences that are arising in your awareness, not threats to the meditation process. Recall the observe and report security guard metaphor from a few moments ago. The breath is the security guard's chair as he watches what comes up on the monitors. In fact, setting yourself up for a good meditation session can start by checking in with each monitor. Next, take your attention briefly off the breath and ask yourself, what's going on elsewhere? What sounds do you hear in the room that are part of your present moment experience? What tastes or smells might be there too? How does your body feel? being pulled into earth by gravity. Now, sit back in your metaphorical chair, your experience of breathing, and just watch what happens. Thoughts, feelings, and sensations will ask for your attention. Notice them and respond to each and every one of them with a simple response. Hey there, thought or feeling about such and such. That's okay. I don't mind your being here but I'll go ahead and return my attention to the breath for now. Maybe immediately after this meditation, you'll go right back to problem-solving and obeying your OCD. But for now, for the next few minutes, let yourself act differently. Let yourself take this break from trying to make sense of what goes on in your mind, and simply not mind. The rest of meditation is really just about how much time you're ready to devote to the exercise. In short, watch the breath go in and out, and whenever you become aware that you're watching something other than the breath, watch the breath. If attending to the breath is a trigger for your OCD, it can also be a good opportunity to address this fear. However, if the experience is so unpleasant, as to take up all of your attention, you can work with another anchor, such as the sensation of sitting or experience of sounds in the room. After the meditation, maybe you're already engaging in compulsions, but at least you put in the effort to try something different for a few minutes. Tomorrow, do it again. Maybe during the process, you had five actual seconds of relief from OCD problem solving, and the rest was just catching yourself problem-solving. Maybe next time, you'll have seven seconds. Or, more importantly, maybe next time, you will become aware of an obsession about the past or future, and you will come back to the present that much quicker.